So this is one of three high performance classes. So again, this is one of those classes that the popularity grew so much that we added a second and it kept growing. So we added a third. So we actually have three Are you serious? high performance classes right nice. now. Nice. And so what's the number in those? What's the number? 40 in? per class. Are you kidding me? Wow. Yeah. We well. never have a problem filling these seats. We have a total of three chassis dynos, one of which is an all wheel drive dyno two are going to be um, above ground, and then we have an in-ground wow. super flow dyno, and then we also have an engine dyno cell. And I mean, the students themselves are learning how to use these dynos absolutely. and everything. Absolutely, every student insane. has the opportunity to use them. That is awesome. Um, we do cylinder head port and polishing, we do complete <laughs> engine rebuilds, so we have a combination of Mopar, Chrysler, and Ford V8s, and every student will do a teardown, mic everything, reassemble it, put it back together, make it run, then we go through carb tuning for this elevation and we also go through ignition timing maps. So they are tuned for 7220 elevation. That's awesome. Man, the science that goes behind every A little lot. thing. Yes. Um, we also- Now time out. You guys didn't tell me you specialized in supercars. <laughs> <laughs> so why are you leaning on that one? I love, I love this car. You you know how I am about my little cars, I do, man. Like I do. this right this here. This is a big car compared to what you built. This is the biggest car I've leaned on for a while, brother. <laughs> it's cool seeing a, what well, is this, a Festiva? Yeah, so you can actually get in this one without a shoehorn. Yeah, I like this. <laughs> now why is this in the high performance class? So I'm What's not real plan? sure, but we'd have to get with the student and see what he's planning. This is a is. student project? It is. Good. Good. I want to meet this guy. Yeah. <laughs> we put things where they don't belong in here. I like it. V8s and little tiny cars. and. Um, I put Harley Davidson's and Izetta's and stuff. Yeah, so I mean. I, I'm from here too, buddy. <laughs> Did you take this class? No. No, that's why I said I'd never even, I, I'd never been in the high performance or the chassis fab. Like I've never, I, I didn't know what they did, no. So years ago, chassis fab and high performance engines used to be one class. And you would see the diversity of the students saying, well, quick. I would rather be into the engine side of things yeah. than be into the chassis side of things or vice versa. And then we decided, you know, hey, let's take a pause. Let's focus mostly on the chassis fab. And then years later, somewhere around that 2014, 15, we decided we were actually going to start a sole uh, high performance class. And it has went gangbusters every That's awesome. Wow. Well, cool. That is awesome. So you're seeing specialists get jobs, you know, and being able to come in here and kind of, like this is the lane I want to go and not have to waste a month and a half on something that you don't see in your future is so valuable. Absolutely. This has the potential of over 800 horsepower. That's awesome. Is um, it a B engine or a K engine or? So K engine. Okay. So, big turbo, forged internals, four and a half inch exhaust all the way to the back. Last dyno pull we made was 632. Okay. And there was still a bunch left on the table. That's awesome, man. That is so cool. Tire fryer. I drove a 92 Integra to Wyo Tech the first time. That was my car. Okay. Paid 300 bucks for it. No heat, no nothing, baby. <laughs> Well, we give them more than three hundred dollars for yep. this one. But there's there's a little bit more than three hundred dollars in this bad boy. Yeah. So I this is it. a GSR, and we did the complete engine build here, and all the dyno tune mapping was also done here. Now, do you guys race at all? Do you have any race cars that you race? Or no? Is there a track even anywhere close to here? Douglas. Which is how far away? Two hours. About two hours. Okay, so yep. it's drivable. So this is one of our dynos over here. This is the Super Flow in ground dyno. Um, Where's that? Right here. Oh, in, okay. In ground. So it's the only chassis dyno we have in this shop. We're going to see how many horsepower I got. <laughs> in ground, man. That is fancy. Yeah. Look how free flowing. So the reason we use this dyno the most is because 
this phase, every student will be actually creating a fuel and ignition map tune on an import. Oh my goodness. So we put a really bad tune in it from the get-go. For them to fix. So it's slobbering, it's dumping fuel, and then they've got to write a new program so that it has the best tune possible for that make and model, which is only about 165 horsepower at the tires, and that is corrected numbers, so based on sea level numbers. Um, but it still teaches them how to build to efficiency. So they'll be tuning off of a wideband fuel monitor. So they're watching, you know, how much oxygen is being left over or consumed. Man. Just that car being is... in here gets the pregnancy rate up like 200%. <laughs> so our newest addition is this 572 crate motor. Nice. Which you can see right here. Nice. I like that stand, man. Yeah, so this is a, what they call dyno cart. So we can wheel it right into the room and it connects oh. directly to the water brake. Oh, so you have different bell housing adapters to, nice. Yep. yep. So this is actually connected to what's called a water brake, which puts the load on the engine, which forces the torque up. Okay. Dude. So you can simulate a lot, like you can simulate a lot of pool, like different kinds of pools. Road conditions. We can simulate a, a, a hilly road, um, or if you're going up the summit to 8,300 feet. Really? We can simulate all so, that. So I mean, if you are like, say you're gonna do the hot rod power tour or something, and you know that you're gonna be running into this and this and this, you can prepare your tune for the trip. Correct. Wow, that's nuts. Now granted, there's some variables you can account for. for maybe sure. it's a windy day, yeah. or maybe the hills are a little more extreme than what you anticipated, but for the most part, you can get a general good tune for where you're gonna go race. Preparation's key to a long life too. It'll make an engine last a whole lot longer, won't it? Yeah, we, uh, we integrate the weather system into this too, so we can calculate for barometric pressure. Are you so serious? If you wanna know what your engine's doing on a rainy day versus a sunny day, we can actually see the differences. I'd say guys that are bracket racing, stuff like that, that's all of the information in the world they're after, Absolutely. Ain't it? That's yeah. awesome. That's why we get beat. That's why. Yeah, yeah man. That's why. Yeah. It ain't it ain't because of my red lights. <laughs> no, we won't talk about yeah, that. Yeah, let's leave them out. <laughs> this tea bucket's nice, man. Yeah, this is a customer's tea bucket. We're building an engine for it. It's awesome. Man. Now when I say customers, we don't like normally take outside customer work but on occasion if it's a relative of an instructor or something like that we'll usually try to yeah. help hook them up and especially something that i mean this just being in here is very different than everything else and this speaks to a different demographic that would be coming into the class so it's cool sure. that they're letting the they're letting the students work on this awesome yeah and that's the nice thing about this class is the d diversity that we have with it a t bucket or a wrx subaru i mean either way we're building horsepower that's awesome so. Or an awesome Festiva. Or the awesome Festiva. That's what I'm figuring. I'm figuring something cool is about to happen with a Festiva. <laughs> That's a nice old truck here. It really is. Pretty clean. Not the rusty stuff you and I are used to. I came from Indiana myself. Did you? Where are you from? Uh, Wabash, Indiana. I know yet. Yep, we're the Wabash Cannonball. Oh, yeah. Yep. I know yet. So everything was rusty and nasty How, there. Were you born there? Like you from? I was Indiana? born and raised there. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Thirty-five years I lived there. Nice, dude. Yep. Who's your boy? Who's your boy? That's cool, dude. I tell you that I rock. Rust free '84 cross fire injection. It's like that's like a Lamborghini Countach or something now. You know, <laughs> right? <laughs> Them things they're getting they're a they're a cult classic now couldn't hardly give them away before. She do, that's what she drove in high school. She drove a 92 Camaro T-tops, cow hood, and I, she pulled up, and I was like, I'm marrying that girl. <laughs> I'm marrying that girl. <laughs> and you had your mullet? Oh, wait. <laughs> now she had the mullet. Had that's the how mullet. I knew she was the one, bro. <laughs> 
Where are we heading next, boys? Hey, we're going to head over to the other uh, high performance class that we have here. Another high performance and class. And then we'll view Street Rod right after that. This is a high performance kind of place, ain't it? It, it really <laughs> is. That's how we roll around here. <laughs> So I this is it. our all-wheel drive dyno that we have. So this is a engine performance class as well. Just, as well. It's, okay. Yep. So all the same curriculum, everything's the same. Projects are going Is this split into your two separate classes here? Is this building the two other classes? Because you said you had three of those, right? Yeah. So the third one's going to be in the other building. All right. So you have like you need that much room for absolutely. For this. So yeah. high performance takes up a lot of real estate. It really does because but, of the dynos and i mean it's really everything ain't and it? you can justify it because the interest is there yeah. so that is so cool man is this the is this the original dyno that you said you guys it had? is it is so this is an all-wheel drive adjustable table so you can set up for different wheelbases what do you mean by the oh yep so now these rollers actually spread out and contract uh, so you can set it up for different, you know, whether it be an extended cab four-wheel drive truck or And I mean, a small if you've compact. got an all-wheel drive WRX or a Dodge diesel truck four-wheel drive, you can either one. Absolutely. That's crazy. Yep. Now, how often does a machine like this get serviced? About every quarter. Really? We go through, check connections, check cables, um, you know, drum bearings, things like that. They're pretty self-sufficient for the most part. Um, but they do get used, so yeah. you still got to, you know, grease the tables, you know, so things move freely as it should. And um, everything's just in such good shape, you know, like everything I look at looks brand new. You say this has been here. Well, they learn how to clean here, too. Yeah. Well, that's good. <laughs> hey, that is good. That, that, that's good. So, I mean, even the students are helping take care of the tools, the everything. Yep. They Which, are held accountable for that. You should be held accountable for everything you do, shouldn't you? You should. That's awesome. Yeah. Every night, the students sweep and squeegee. Good. Good. I mean, it's good they do it and I don't. It's good. <laughs> You've done it, though. I do it. I clean. I keep a very clean shop. I built that at Wyotech. When the recruiter came, uh, he wanted to see like what I was working on and stuff. I showed him all my cars, and he said, I want to see your bedroom. And I was like, no, you don't. <laughs> and he went in my bedroom, and it was just a wreck. you know. And he said, you're going to have to be a lot neater and nicer in here. I was like, yeah, but I spend no time in here. How did the shop look? And when I got here, we had the same mentality. It's like, keep a clean shop. you know. Yeah. Clean shop's a happy shop. It really is. And you can find that 10 millimeter socket. It's yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're there. Now, I'll say when Michael gets in thrash mode, it gets a little crazy. Oh, yeah. But once it's cleaned up, he's like, man, I love it. There's yeah. nothing that I can make easier than a big pile of trash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So all of the ones that have the uh, Wyotech tags on them are, are school vehicles then? Correct, correct. So you guys have quite a few different makes and models that are on the roster here all the time. I mean, I'm seeing the Acuras and Ford Mustangs. And I mean, even with like the hauler and stuff, mm -hmm. you guys actually have invested in projects here for all walks of life too. And Sean could probably tell you better on what the total count of student owned vehicle or uh, in school owned vehicles are, but it's <laughs> yeah. a couple hundred or it's better. Several hundred, that's, I would say, yeah. you bet. That's we awesome. have to have a fleet, especially when we get over to like the automotive side, we work on every make and model that we can get in here and we invest into the, the campus as much as we can when we can. To truly prepare so, them for the that, real industry. That's yeah. not just the automotive side, but when we go to the diesel side, you see the class eight trucks that we have in there and, and all that equipment and tooling and collision side and yes. That's so cool. Well, we'll venture over to Street Rod and give you a good tutorial of that. So. First part of the tour, Motorsports Chassis Fab and some HPPT, what do you think? Man, you guys started the, the you started this whole thing off with nothing but regrets for me. I wish I would've took those classes, <laughs> man. That's fun. I like the diversity of the, of the projects in there and then getting to see, you know, like the potential that's to come. Next time I come out, I'll see stuff even fancier. That's exciting, man.